US Vice President Joe Biden has said discrimination against transgender people is the civil rights issue of our time. They are one of the most marginalised groups. But in a few weeks' time in Adelaide, transgender men and women will be sharing their stories in public. And one of the organisers told us a bit about her life. Since her childhood in England, Cindy McArdle has admired the elegance and rigour of science. There's a clarity of thinking and required in science. You cannot take anything as true without having proof. Of course, scientific truth is always open to further experimentation, renewed hypothesis and further uh, exploration into where those ideas and concepts come from. It became her career, though these days Associate Professor McArdle spends more time in management than with microscopes. And science has been her safe haven. In many uh, years of my life I could use science as a way of hiding away from uh, emotional and uh, uh, personal issues. She was hiding from herself because while others saw her as a man, Cindy McArdle knew that wasn't so. I always know when I'm a female, I'm a woman, it always came completely natural to me. It was the confusion of everybody else around me uh, with my physical natal form that caused the issues. It's a life story Dr Rob Lyons has heard many times before. He's a psychiatrist who for the past 35 years has worked with transgender people. Not because being transgender is a condition or illness, but most often because of damaging reactions to it. I experience a lot of rejection, harassment, discrimination, isolation. Some have been so traumatised that they can have a post-traumatic stress disorder, depending on the level of violence that has been um, committed against them. Uh, and such we do get, therefore, uh, high incidences of associated psychiatric illness with this population. That psychiatric illness is not related to the gender variance, it is secondary. 1.2% of people identify as transgender. Studies show they're more likely to experience bullying, emotional, verbal and sometimes physical abuse. The rate of suicide is an estimated 6 to 14 times greater. More than 40% of transgender people at some point attempt self-harm or suicide. And often no one is harder on transgender people than transgender people themselves. I was fairly revolted by my body for most of the time. At times if I was feeling particularly bad, maybe for days on end I would have the mirrors uh, that I would frequent um, covered and so I didn't catch the glimpses of him uh, and so I could uh, ignore those images being present in my environment and that way is one of the ways of coping. You just made it utterly clear for me you called him him that was someone else. Yeah, oh, yes. That was someone else in the mirror wasn't it? Yes, yes. I, I, I remember him quite well and uh, uh, in fact, I bear him uh, a great deal of love and, uh, and respect. You know, he protected me and uh, um, he did a pretty good job to try and struggle through his life, uh, um, make sure I was safe and eventually uh, allowed me uh, to live my life. When did you start living your life as...? I went full-time as me just over two years ago. Now, in her spare time, Cindy McArdle helps others make their transition, administering a transgender support website. She describes her journey as gifted. Cindy McArdle is financially secure, surrounded by supportive friends, family and colleagues. I thought it was going to be very frightening, and there was a certain amount of nervousness. Um, but For you or for them? <laughs> Or for both? I think for both. Uh, obviously my journey has been everybody else's journey as well. Um, uh, in many ways my journey has been the easiest. I know who I am. And in October, Cindy McArdle and Rob Lyons are helping other transgender people say who they are publicly. Adelaide's hosting a major international conference bringing together health and legal professionals and transgender people. This is uh, probably uh, the most comprehensive and most important conference 
on uh, gender diverse issues that's ever been held in Australia, if not the Southern Hemisphere. No doubt it will be um, uh, coming out into society and coming out uh, to politicians and coming out to uh, the health system and coming out to everybody, just letting people know that we're not monsters, we're just normal men and women with normal needs. And there'll be plenty to talk about because too often those needs go unmet. Transgender people face many practical and legal hurdles and one size does not fit all. Not all transgender people want gender confirming surgery. For Cindy McArdle, however, it is important. I've decided that from a personal point of view that I would like to go forward with uh, gender confirming surgery and uh, that is so that my body uh, matches my mind. Um, I'm hoping uh, as long as everything goes well uh, that will be occurring in early uh, 2015 and uh, uh, I'll be having uh, uh, that surgery in, in, in Australia. But it won't be in Adelaide. Flinders Medical Centre shut its gender confirming surgery unit in the late 1980s. Rob Lyons says the state's outdated regulations effectively close other public health services to transgender people. And if federally registered private practitioners want to work in the area, they have to re-register with the state, which few bother to do. We are not allowed to access uh, hormonal, endocrine or surgical um, uh, providers in the public health system. Um, we are it is an issue of human rights. The state refuses to treat them in the hospitals here, insists that we send them to Melbourne, but of course of the PATS scheme pays for their fares over there and back. Um, it just doesn't make sense. For transgender men, some procedures aren't done in Australia at all. Some transgender women travel overseas, primarily to Thailand, in the mistaken belief surgery there is cheaper. Rob Lyons says that's because across Australia, transgender people are forced to rely on private health cover to meet their needs. What happens if you haven't got private health? Uh, then you're in trouble. But things are changing. These days, none of the mirrors in Cindy McArdle's home are covered. The depression she suffered is just a memory. Before her, there were the women of the 19th century demanding their vote and Aboriginal Australians fighting for recognition. The US Civil Rights Movement with Rosa Parks' famous refusal to give up her seat on the bus. Cindy McArdle says she's doing what marginalised people have always done, standing up for themselves. I think we're still managed to get on the bus. I think we're walking down the aisleway and trying to find out where the spare seat is.